All right, so folks, this thing about hand sanitizers, here's the deal. Basically, what happened was, or what happened is, people drink hand sanitizers, or should I say addicts drink hand sanitizers when they cannot get alcohol. Bruh. Yeah. Okay then. So, you have people ingesting hand sanitizers in the U.S., and basically what happened was when the FDA looked across the, at the figures in 2019, only 33 people who ingested hand sanitizer in 2019 probably got sick, but they weren't in ICU and they certainly didn't end up dead. When they looked at the figures for June alone in 2020, there were 22 people who had ingested hand sanitizer ended up in ICU and four of them died, which basically spurred the FDA now to test the hand sanitizers as well. This was a, a what do you call that? It was a reason, to, they gave them a reason to test it. It's like a red flag, a red flag. So upon testing the hand sanitizers, they found that the products had methanol in it. So when people were digesting or ingesting hand sanitizers before looking for alcohol content they would not have died they would not have been hospitalized per se but in this year that's what happened so the fda found at least 76 labels 76 brands and pulled them off the market in the u.s my question is our question is well are we getting those brands here in Trinidad and Tobago? What's up with hand sanitizers in Trinidad and Tobago? To find out exactly what's going on, we're going to speak with Dr. Christian Abood of Welfare and Biova. So we're here with Dr. Christian Abood, the CEO of Welfare and Bio Biova. Biova. Biova Building Solutions. Right, and he's going to talk to us today about the hand sanitizers on the market that we have. So, Dr. Boone, welcome to What's Up. So, um, earlier this month, the US FDA announced that it is pulling certain brands of hand sanitizers yes. off the shelves because when they tested it, they realized that... The ethanol in label, methanol in the product. Correct, yes. exactly. So, could you tell us like, if sure. that sort of thing happened here, there was a recall here in Canada, oh, yeah. and how it may have affected operations here for you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I think worldwide we saw something that we never really expected, you know, we never really saw before when it came to uh, panic solutions for hygiene, um, washing your hands, I mean, toilet paper was gone, soap was gone, hand sanitizer was gone. But what you actually saw more than anything else is uh, the most of the informed public know that a certain percentage of alcohol is effective. So isopropyl alcohol and ethanol were the first to go. In terms of after you buy the off-the-shelf hand sanitizers, and off the shelf disinfectants where people are really scrambling. The next thing that they would go for is isopropyl and the ethanol products. So, because there was a shortage globally and then a shortage in Trinidad, what most likely happened is that methanol just was a little bit more available and a little bit less expensive. I mean, I know for a fact that when you try to get something like um, ethanol or you try to get something like isopropyl, it was almost impossible. And if you did get it, it was very expensive. You mean during the COVID period? And during the COVID period. And, and right thereafter and possibly a little bit before. So what would have happened is a lot of companies would have been a little bit desperate. And when you come to a company that's desperate, that needs something. I mean, everybody's scared for their life. Um, something, and then you present them with a solution to say, hey, you know, this will do the job. Because methanol will do the job. You know, it's, an, it's alcohol. It will do the job. The problem is it's incredibly toxic. So it shouldn't do the job in terms of, like, it shouldn't be the choice. But because it was an alcohol, you can sell that to a company and they would say, okay, I'd use this if they were not the wise. Right. So um, a lot of those brands that, they, that got recalled seem to be like Mexican brands. Mm -hmm. A lot of them came from Mexico. Okay. Do you think or do you know if we were getting any of those brands here locally? I know that we had some brands uh, manufactured in Trinidad. That we're using methanol. To what to what I understand, I don't, I'm not saying for sure, but I know that happened, and I know that the ministry is very firm about that. 
and, and they were able to recall most of it. I think it should be pulled out of the shop and read. Uh, I can't speak to that with full confidence because I don't know, but I do know that we had some brands here in Trinidad that were not, um, were not kosher. Okay. Can a regular person test their own hand sanitizer at home to see if there might be methanol in it? Is that, is that even possible? Um, I don't think so. Uh, I think the, the best thing to do is the same thing we do for any other product that we use with confidence is to have our governing bodies oversee what's being used. I think one of the biggest problems now is that when the CDC and the uh, WHO say use something with 60 to, uh, above 60 or above 70% alcohol, a lot of companies are now just putting on their label alcohol. You know, because right here where you have the ingredients, you can put alcohol just by itself. You can say alcohol, you can say propylene glycol, you can say aloe vera, vitamin E. And not, but you, not state exactly which, which alcohol, alcohol you use. That needs to be cracked down instantly. And one of the reasons that people have been doing that, some, sometimes very instantly, is because they don't know if they can get ethanol or they can get isopropyl. Sometimes you get one easier than the other, and both are equally effective in this form when mixed as a hand sanitizer. Okay. However, if our ministry or regulatory bodies are very careful with what they allow onto the market, and they review the products allowed onto the market, they, there shouldn't be any methanol um, containing hand sanitizers available. That's, that's the hope. Right. So when we go into the larger establishments, or even the smaller ones, public offices and public establishments, and there are dispensers there, and what do you say to the public that we don't know what's in that dispenser? Yeah, I mean, I think it's time that we as a society of people move from the sort of panic to Reno, where we're in, we were just using anything. You know, once you had something, you were good to go because nobody had anything. You know, you went to the grocery stores, you went to the pharmacies, they have no hand sanitizer, they have no soaps. We're sort of moving out of that now. Trinidad is blessed. And we are right now in a safe space relatively speaking, with COVID-19. So it's important for us now, that now we move out of that space to start asking the questions, okay, I'm coming into this building, what are you giving me? What are you putting on my hands? What alcohol is this? What are you spraying me with? Um, so you think that we should be able to ask that question and get oh, sure. an answer? For sure, just like anything else. I mean, uh, it's the same way that you can, you can walk into a restaurant and say, what are you serving me? Especially if it's something you're giving me that I didn't ask for. And that could affect my health. Right. And you're essentially telling me that if you want to enter my building, you have to use this. I deserve to know what that is. Right. You know? I don't think it's fair to immediately assume that it's something nefarious, but whoever's using it should be able to comment on its manufacturing quality, its availability, its, well, not availability, but um, its origin, you know, its origin what kind of alcohol was used, etc. Is it pure alcohol? Is it, um, is it a hand sanitizer? Was it manufactured in Trinidad? Was it imported? Is it regulated? So the public could know exactly what it is, where it came yeah. from, yeah. what, what, Just so what that is inside of it. So that sense of confidence. I mean, it's even the same to know that it's not 40%. I'll call it 70%. Am I rubbing this thing on my hand that, you know, it doesn't smell good, it feels tacky, you know, it's sticky. Is what it, is it? What is it? Yes. You should be able to ask that. I, I definitely think so. So just how harmful is methanol to... Person that yes, or yeah. or where it's absorbed onto the skin. Um, on the skin, I don't think that you have too too much to worry about. I know for sure in ingesting and inhalation, you're talking about a, a, a very toxic and possibly even fatal fatal um, chemical. The methanol uh, by itself is not too harmful, but it actually changes into something called formic acid. And as formic acid, it could damage your nerves, it could it could cause comas, it can cause uh, metabolic disorders, and even death. Right. So I read that the US FDA said that no hand sanitizer should carry a label that says FDA approved right. because there's no hand sanitizer right. that is FDA approved right. on the market. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us about your your brands here? Sure. Um, so that is, that is absolutely true. Uh, the whole process to register a product as a hand sanitizer under the FDA is very lengthy in terms of US FDA. Our product here, All Clear, um, we have done our due diligence. 
we have went um, and sure that the people we're working with have been in the big game for a long time. They're not opportunistic companies that just popped up when COVID happened. They've been manufacturing hand sanitizer for a while, they manufacturing chemicals for a while, and um, we ensure that their process was solid. And then we obviously told them that we want to take it to the TTBS, we want to take it to the local FDA to ensure that everything is cream kosher, and things are going quite well so far um, in terms of our feedback on that front. And we should have a stamp and of approval. And ours is 70% ethanol, uh, very specifically. Uh, it also has a lovely smell. I, I'm a big fan of it. <laughs> yeah. You want to talk to us about your health gate? One thing that was happening during the COVID times was temperature gauging with the thermometers, infrared thermometers. It came to be that it started off as like, you know, the the bigger companies are bringing it in, good models, FDA, CE approved models, and then same thing as the isopropyl alcohol or the ethanol alcohol, it was impossible to get right. these guns. So everybody started bringing them in. And I mean everybody. It was almost like Tommy's plumbing lights and temperature guns. Right. You know, everybody started, to, and, and you know, people, you know, you have to make a living, and I understand that, but what was happening is that you have some temperature gauges that are not certified. They're not regulated for bodies, which is a huge problem. Um, they're not FDA approved or CE approved. So CE would be from Europe, FDA would be from the States. Right. Both equally valid approval rates, but some of them have neither. Uh, so when you have infrared temperatures, it usually, when it comes to engineering, that's taking the temperature of a piece of metal or machinery to see what the heat output was. And that's not for bodies at all. And a lot of people are using it for bodies, incorrectly so. Another huge problem is the distance in which you take the temperature. A lot of people were using sort of a distance like this. Because if you have to imagine it, if this person's sick and I'm taking their temperature, I don't want to get close. I don't know if they're sick yet, I haven't scanned them. So they kind of stand far back. But if this is the person's head, I actually need to stand this close. Which people are not doing. So, so we've been not taking proper temperatures oh, absolutely across not. the board. I remember there was this time I actually went into a building and this guy shot my temperature from almost halfway across the room um, with, a, with a, a Fluke engineering gun, which is for machinery. Fluke is an amazing brand for machinery. And then he, he essentially said, uh, yeah, you're good to go. I said, okay, what am I? He said, yeah, yeah, 31.5. You're, you're okay. I said, okay, I'm dead. 31.5? So, um, so yeah, so no, we haven't been doing it quite well. So this K7 model is something I'm actually really passionate about. Um, this entire gate was created by another company that we run called BioVo. The Bio is building solutions. Essentially, we go into a building, we spec out exactly what they need. Do they need screens? Do they need signs? Do they need hand sanitizer? Do they need temperature gauging? What this allows us to do is get hand sanitizer without touching it and take our temperature quickly and easily without touching anything without needing somebody to stand up without affording human error also we can use our wrist and as you can see it's quite it's quite accurate because you're taking it over the radial artery and this is the coolest part of it now if you have a situation where you have somebody presenting with a higher temperature so you now get that, that alarm. So this device on its own is going to be a non-contact solution. And it's quick. You walk in to a building, scan, sanitize, and then it's sort of approved. You go to enter the building. So it's something we're really passionate about, both from the medical side and from the logistics side. I think it solves a lot of issues. Thank you so much for having us here. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. So I don't know about you, but I am going to be now walking with my own hand sanitizer everywhere that I go because I don't know what's in the public dispensers out there. And don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos like these.